So, I've progressed a bit farther in pain mode here. And this is one of the big things I've heard that unlocks in pain mode. So far, there's only been one difference. And it was just one boss, aside from the overall difficulty increase. And that's a lot of zombies. So it's just over random. Alright. There's mutants on the island. Mine's sheep. Fishmen with repulsive waste. Violent soldiers. And a joy mutant was his favorite. I believe that the the mutants from Resort Island could have been scientists, and this could be a double thing as the transformations makes him a mindless sheep, and that the fact that he did not go of his wishes made them mindless sheep. The fishmen would obviously be a byproduct of experiments, and they're completely worthless. And he probably flushed them down the sewers, which is why you see them in the water. It's kind of like a crocodile thing. Uh, the zombies are a byproduct of some Resident Evil stupid making an army thing, which is what we know the Joy Project was all about. And the mutants are kind of purity. They're purity of emotion, and once they've expended their emotion, they just kind of have a sereneness to it. You know, as a trumpet theme has started playing, and the trumpet only plays in places where Dr. Yado can interact with you. It's possibly Buddy's mother.
So that's it for my Lisa playthrough. Paint mode is not too much different, it adds a few of those little extra bosses during the little transition points. And it obviously unlocks the lab. And the lab gives you quite a few hints, although there's no extra bosses or anything in there. And it gives you that new scene after the ending that overrides your joyful or joyless ending scene. But from what we get, we can put together that Buzzo is pretty much behind everything in this game or indirectly connected to it. He cut off Rando's face, which probably triggered Brad kind of isolating himself from everyone before the apocalypse. He was possibly a student under Brad. He worked with Dr. Yado, who pretty much created the Flash as far as we know, and the Joy Mutants and everything we see in this world. And it's from Dr. Yado's ambitions that Buddy and this whole conflict and all the events of the game happen, and Dr. Yado stalks you throughout the whole thing. So these two figures are pretty much the closest you get to a antagonist big bad in the game. Because Rando is the final boss, but you know, he's obviously not the antagonist. He's just something that you fought because you were in the wrong place at the wrong time kind of thing. And speaking of Rando, he may actually be alive. If you notice when you actually interact with his body, um, Brad doesn't say he's dead, he says he's done. So considering Brick, was assumed to be dead when Brad inspected him and he was still alive. Rando could still be alive and he could become an important character in the sequel, The Last Girl. And since Buzzo and Dr. Yato's story aren't fully fleshed out and nor have they been handled in the plotline yet, um, they're obviously gonna be the... probably the main antagonists of that game, or... the... their conflict will come to a resolution there. Anyway, that sums up the main story. I'm gonna share some little cute facts and things you can find out, especially if you have the art book. One of the things that's interesting is that Carp is not actually a fish man, he's just a guy in a fish mask. And Carp is connected to the orphans you burned alive earlier in the game. He actually leaves the orphans with Morris and kind of, uh, or whatever his name was, and goes off on his journey. And I've brought Carp back there, but there's no actual effect and he doesn't acknowledge that the Morphins are nothing but hashes now or anything like that. The other two profiles that have some unique stuff you really wouldn't know is the one about Fly Minnelli. That the fact he actually founded Garbage Island and his outfit's a reference to a Sentai show he liked. I'm gonna assume he was a common Rider fan or something. And that kind of fits into his motif of riding carts. So you kind of have the spectrum of Toku covered with the Rangers and you have Fly with the kind of common Rider bug-themed toku hero kind of thing. And the other one that's interesting is actually Goose's background, which you wouldn't really know at all. And that Goose is actually a serial killer who used to leave poetry on his murder victims, hoping that the police would actually catch him, but it actually just confused the hell out of him and he was never caught. So it adds a bit of a sinister edge to what's an overall peaceful character throughout the game. Anyway, that's enough out of me. So, thank you all for watching me play Lisa, and I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.